Hello class, in today's video, we're going to be looking at standard deviation. The learning intention of today's video is we're going to understand that standard deviation is a number that describes the spread of data from the mean. To know that a standard deviation means data are concentrated about the mean, to know how to calculate the standard deviation for a small set of data, and to be able to compare two sets of data referring to the mean and standard deviation. Now, before we actually go into look at what standard deviation is, these are some of the things that we've already looked at in the previous lessons. We said that the distribution of any data set can be analyzed by its shape, center, and spread. And when we're talking about the shape, we're talking about um, how does it actually appear. So is it symmetric or is it skewed? Is it positively skewed or is it negatively skewed? And we said that we can tell whether something's positively skewed and negatively skewed by looking at the lengths of the upper tail and lower tail. So in this case here, because the upper tail in this case is a lot more longer than the lower tail, this is going to be positively skewed. We talked about center and there are three ways we, where we could actually measure the center or the average of a data set. And this can be done by the mean, median, or mode, and for spread, we said that this can be um, done by calculating either the range or the IQR. Now, obviously, um, the range and the IQR or some of the other measures um, can't be determined by all visual um, graphs. Now, we already know that um, certain types of visual graphs uh, represent some information that are not present on other ones, such as, for instance, um, the IQR is readily obtainable through a box plot, but obviously a histogram or a dot plot doesn't readily show this information. However, we are still able to actually work that out if we have the raw data. So, um, and one of the things that we're going to be looking at today is how do we actually calculate the standard deviation? And the standard deviation is not something that we can obtain readily from a box plot per se, but we can actually calculate what the standard deviation is from um, a dot plot or something from a stem and leaf plot or as well as a histogram. So that's just one thing that I wanted to point out. So what is the standard deviation? Well, firstly, the standard deviation is a measure of a spread. So it does tell you how spread or scattered the data points are. But specifically what it is, is it's a number that describes how spread out the data is from the mean. And what I have in that little definition of there is that um, the standard deviation is represented by the letter S, whereas the mean is represented by an X bar. So that little line on, on top of the X, that's the X bar so in this case. Now, down below, I've got two histograms over here, and this is showing you the standard deviations between each of these two sets of data. So notice that the standard deviation on the left over here is 21, whereas the standard deviation on the right is 11. If you look at the right-hand side, I've said that a small standard deviation, so I'll just abbreviate or shorten it in this case, um, indicates a small spread from the mean, meaning that the values are a lot more concentrated and it's a bit more compact and consistent Whereas um, when you have a number that's a large value, so a large standard deviation, this indicates that, that you have a large spread from the mean and it's therefore a lot more scattered, it's a lot more further away, it's a bit more diverse in this case. So if we were looking at these two values over here, we can clearly see that, that on the left hand side, this has a larger standard deviation compared to um, this data set on the right hand side, which has a smaller standard deviation. Another way that you could actually tell, other than just um, looking at the values, is that, for instance, we know, for the instance, in the, in the um, data set representing eagles, the mean is going to be somewhere around over here because you've got a relatively symmetric data set. So your mean is over here, and as a result, we can kind of see that there are a lot of bars um, that's situated away from the mean so therefore this is going to therefore have a large standard deviation which is what we've already said previously whereas um, on the data set on the right which represents monsters in this case the mean is going to lie somewhere around over here okay and we can kind of see that there's less bars in this case most of the values are um, concentrated and close to or clustered around the mean as a result this has a smaller um, standard deviation so you can kind of work the standard deviation um, mathematically but you can also eyeball it if you have the graph presented as well now just to, for you guys to check for your understanding I want you to please answer these two questions on the right hand side of you for me please um, give yourself five minutes and then we'll compare your answers with my answers Okay guys, if you've done part A correctly, then you should have got an answer of 
data set B. So data set B has a greater mean. And the way that we do this is um, by adding up all the values found in the data set and then divided by the number of values. In this case over here, you've got uh, one value that equals to one, another value equals to one, which is why I went one plus one plus, in this case, two plus two plus two, because there's three, two values and so forth. Divided by 16, you're going to get a value of 3.06. Do the same thing, same thing for the other data set. And if you did this, you're going to get, you're going to get a mean of 3.38. As a result, um, data set B has a greater mean. Once we've got the answer for part A, it becomes really easy for us to determine uh, which um, of these data sets has the greater standard deviation. So we said that um, the mean for part A is 3.96. So um, it's going to lie somewhere here. That's your mean in this case. 3.38 lies around over here, okay? Now, we c once we've already established what the mean is, we all, all we need to do is to see whether the values um, in the data set are found close to the mean or away from the mean. In this case here, you'd notice that for part A, most of the data set are found away from the mean as opposed to um, data set B. As a result, in this case, um, data set A has the higher standard deviation because therefore it's got the most um, values that's found further away from it. Remember, a small standard deviation means most of the values are concentrated and close towards the mean itself. What we're going to be looking at now is we're going to be looking at how do we actually calculate the standard deviation. And before we actually, um, uh, before I actually show you how we actually calculate it, I do want to say that in real life, like in most jobs, um, like a data analyst and stuff like that, the standard deviation is usually calculated by using a, um, a professional calculator or an Excel spreadsheet. And this can be automated and done very simply in um, less than a minute or so. However, in this particular course for Maths A, there is a focus in by hand calculations, which is why I need to show you how do we actually do this using the proper formula, which is a bit more time consuming and not really plausible in real life at all because you generally have large sets of data. But in this particular course, we're only going to be looking at how do you calculate standard deviation for data sizes with like five or 10 values. Um, now, before we proceed, I do want to kind of briefly mention that the formula that we use to calculate standard deviation depends on whether data is being considered as a population or whether the data is a sample or a representative sample that represents the population. So in our very first lesson, when we looked at statistics, we looked at the differences between samples and population. Remember, a sample is um, a small proportion from the population and ideally you want them to be representative of the population by having like um, diverse traits and everything like that. So this is the formula over here. It does a bit look a bit funky, a bit overwhelming, but I'm going to try my best to kind of dissect it um, and um, chunk it down for you guys. So first of all, uh, we already know that the letter S over here represents standard deviation. And the way that we calculate this is by finding the square root of whatever the thing inside over here is. So I'm going to explain what each of these terms mean. So notice that you've got x1, x2, x1, x2. Uh, what this means is these represent the first and the second value within the data set. So that's what these numbers are. So for instance, if your first value in the data set is 10, and then the next one is like 15, then for x1, you'd be putting 10, x2, you'd be putting 15. And in the data set, you don't actually have to rearrange it from smallest to largest. It doesn't actually matter at all. So that's the first point. The second dot point over here says that N, in this case, represents the number of values in the data set. So let's just say that you had five values in the data set, that N, in this case, would equal to five. Um, what this part over here means is that um, you, there is a pattern within this particular formula. As you can see, um, at the beginning of the formula, I'm going X1 minus X bar, which is the mean, and I'll square it, and then I find the sum, I add it by x2 minus the mean whole squared, and I keep on repeating. So that's what this part over here means. I'm gonna then add it by the third value, which is then subtracted by the mean whole squared, and so forth, so forth, and so forth, until I have, uh, until I do it for the all values within the data set itself, okay? And then once you do that, then you can pretty much use the formula, substitute the thing. So what you do first is subtract each value in the data set by the mean, square the difference, find the sum, then you start doing the division, and then you take the square root, okay? So as I said, this is gonna be a bit overwhelming and it won't make any sense until you actually start um, looking at some examples, okay? So 
But beforehand, I do want to emphasize that there are two different formulas. One of them is for calculating standard deviation within a sample, whereas one of them is calculating standard deviation within a population, okay? And the, really, the only difference between the two formulas is just the denominator part, where the sample's um, standard deviation, you subtract by one, whereas uh, on the right-hand side, you just divide it by n. Another thing that I do want to point out is that most questions are going to ask you to calculate this one over here. So if it doesn't specifically say population standard deviation, um, or it doesn't specify sample standard deviation, generally it's referring to this one over here. So just keep that in mind as well. I also want to mention that because um, you are using this funky formula and you are relying on the calculator mainly, I ideally it's best to use a relatively modern calculator, so a calculator that we recommend at school. So if you have this calculator, then you will have no problems at all calculating the standard deviation. But if you've got a relatively old calculator, then it might not be plausible. So I did include um, a link over here if you want to download this particular program onto your computers if you want to um, obtain the correct answer successfully. So please download at your own risk. Let's look at an example over here to um, see how can we calculate the standard deviation. So in order for us to calculate standard deviation, you recall that we need to know what the mean is first so that we can actually find the standard deviation. So let's first find out the mean. To find out the mean, we already know that we have to add up all the values within the data set and divide it by the total number of values in the data set. So if I do this, I'm going to get an answer of 5.6 exactly in your calculator. And once you do this, then you can calculate your standard deviation. So this was the formula to calculate the standard deviation. And notice this is referring to the sample standard deviation. So I'm using this particular formula over here. And the question wants us to correct it to one decimal place. So remember, x1 represents the first value in the data set, so that, in this case, 2 goes over here. x2 represents the second value in the data set, so this goes over here, and so forth. You, you keep on continuing for all values. So you've got five values, so you're going to be doing this um, repetitively. So if you did this successfully, this is your step over here that you should be writing down as you're working out, okay? So if I did this, 5 is the third value. 8 is the 4th value, 9 is the 5th value. And you're always going to be subtracting by the mean and you're going to be squaring it. And then once you do that, you add them all together and put everything into the calculator. And if you did this correctly, then you should get an answer of 2.9 if you round it up to one decimal place. So in terms of your working out, you do need to show me all this, um, the steps over here, although you're putting everything into the calculator. All right, guys, what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to please have a go with answering this question over here. So please refer back to the other example that we just looked at just then to see whether you can get this answer. If you've done this correctly, then the, this is what you should be getting. So your mean should be equal to 2.8. Uh, once you've found the mean, all you need to do is just substitute this into the formula. And if you did this correctly, then you should, should get an answer of 1.6 if you correct it to one decimal place value. What we're going to be looking at now is how do we actually interpret standard deviation. So this is a, small, a more minor component of today's lesson. So um, I've got an example over here and it reads, this back-to-back -back standard leap plot shows the distribution of distances that 17 people in Darwin and Sydney travel to work. The means and standard deviation are given down below. So you've got the mean for Sydney, Sydney so that's the distance in terms of kilometres of how much people travel um, between Sydney to the workplace. So um, 27.9 um, kilometers in this case um, is the average. And for the standard deviation, it's going to be 15.1 kilometers. And Darwin, it has it down here below. I'm not going to read that out. For part A, it wants, us, it wants you to um, look at the standard leaf plot and suggest why Darwin has a mean that's smaller than Sydney. Now, remember that the mean is going to be impacted and um, influenced by smaller or large values or in essentially what I'm saying is by outliers in this case over here. So in this case, Darwin has a smaller mean compared to Sydney because as you can see over here, the, 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 the highest value or the maximum value of Darwin is going to equal to 35. Okay, so you read it as 3-5, so that's going to be 35 in this case. Whereas the maximum value of Sydney is equal to 52 kilometers. And you'd notice that there are a lot um, there are a lot more values that are greater than the maximum value of Darwin's. And as a result of that, that's the reason why Sydney has a greater average. So I've said Darwin's mean is smaller because it has smaller values in general. In contrast, Sydney has many values that are larger than the maximum value of Darwin, resulting in a larger mean. 
Okay, so that's the answer for part A. Now for part B, it says, why is Sydney's standard deviation larger than, than that of Darwin? And the way that I've answered is, I've said that the distribution of distance in Darwin is a lot more consistent or concentrated or less spread um, because around the mean compared to Sydney, which is more scattered and varied. So remember, we said that things with a larger um, standard deviation is more spread out and more further away from the mean. Things that are that have a smaller standard deviation, on the other hand, are more concentrated and close to the mean. So in this case over here, we can see that um, Darwin, in this case, its, uh, its mean is found over here, whereas for Sydney, its mean is found 27.9. That's going to be roughly around over here. As you can see, there are more values. If you, if you flip your um, device horizontally and you kind of just did a curve over here, um, you would see that there are a lot more values are more spread out from the mean in the Sydney, whereas in Darwin, most of the values are concentrated and found closer as a result of that. So that's the answer for part B. And lastly, for part C, you need to provide a practical reason as to why the difference, to explain the difference in terms of center and spread. And pretty much if you, based on your own current knowledge of those two cities, you know that Sydney is a larger city compared to Darwin. So I've said the difference in spread and center is because Darwin is a smaller city. And as a result of having a small city, you don't really need to travel far at all to get to work. As a result, that's the way that I'd be answering this question. All right, have a go with answering this question now, guys. Um, so please pause this video right now and then compare your answer with my answer. If you guys did this correctly, um, then you should have got something similar to this as your answer for part A. So I've said that the mean for year 12 is less than year 7 because there are many students in year 7 that watch more than the maximum amount recorded in year 12. So what that means is um, notice that um, the maximum amount in year 12 is equal to 35 hours in this case. Uh, in, whereas in contrast, many um, students in this case, so if I circled all of these ones over here, these are the number of students that watch more than the maximum amount of um, the, U12, than the U12 student. And because you've got more values that are larger, then obviously you're going to get um, a large average in this case. For part B, it reads, why is year 7 standard deviation larger than for year 12? And that is, again, related to the distance um, of the data values compared to the actual mean itself. So the standard deviation for year 7 is greater because it has many values that are spread away or further away from the mean itself. Um, and lastly, for part C, give a practical reason for the difference in center spread for the year 7 and year 12 data. So in this case of you, you're gonna to have to rely a bit on your common sense. Um, and you'd know that year 12 is a time where your students are often more studious and are using the time to revise or catch up on homework. As a result, they spend less time on TV. Whereas year seven students um, have a lot more recreational time, which is why they spend more hours on TV. So that's one of the answers that you could give for part C. What I'd like you to do right now, guys, is I'd like you to answer these five textbook questions over here. So questions one, two, three, four, five. On this page, it has the um, first three questions and then answer question four as well as question five. If you've done this all correctly, then these are the answers that you should be obtaining for um, these questions over here. This is the end of today's video. Hopefully this video helped you a lot. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye.